Digital success in less than three minutes. My name is Nicola James and I'm a Chartered Occupational Psychologist. Um, I was diagnosed with dyslexia in my third year of my degree um, and as a result of having support tuition it made such a big difference to my life so actually what I do is to try and help people who have dyslexia so I'm a chart psychologist, I'm the CEO of Lexic. I don't know whether I call dyslexia impairment, an impairment I probably would call it a difference like I think dyslexia enables me to to run a company, I have 15 employees and we're growing, it makes me very sort of bigger picture thinking. I think the thing I find harder is the thing is things like reading complex information, getting my thoughts down on page. So when I was at university, I used three assistive technologies. I used voice recognition, which is basically, I speak and it types for me, like Dragon naturally speaking. I used mind mapping software to help get my thoughts down on, pa on paper and structure my essays in a brainstorming way. And I used text -to speech, I used Read My Goal, which basically reads the text out loud to you and highlights the words as you read. Um, in the workplace, I just use text to speech, which basically is again the reading white gold, which reads the text aloud to me. It makes such a big difference. And also, when proofreading my work, oh my god, it's a saviour. It shows me if I've actually written what I think I've written and helps me spot spelling errors as well. I think one of the only ways I use it differently is I love having huge monitors and particularly having two. Um, what I find is that if I have to keep referring between documents, I might forget what I've looked at, so I'll have to re-look at the document, and that's because of my short-term memory that's related to my dyslexia. Whereas if I can compare and contrast two documents together, or have my emails here, and have the document I'm working on next to me, it makes such a big difference. It enables me to work faster and just be um, more proactive, and as the, the information is larger, I can read documents more easily, I can see mistakes more easily. I think one of my superpowers is the gift of dyslexia because by being given that I did struggle but through those challenges I just wanted to make other people's lives easier so I set Lexic up to help other people who've been through what I've been through and it is challenging when you have dyslexia and you don't have the right tools so I think the superpower is to care about other people and give them the skills that I was given in my, you know, in my third year of my degree and enable them in the workplace to succeed. So if you're thinking of hiring someone with dyslexia, I would look beyond the label. I, I find that dyslexia has many, many strengths. It's just, just important to ensure that the role that the person is going for aligns with those strengths. I have a team with people with, who have dyslexia and don't have dyslexia. And I find that people with dyslexia have many strengths like coaching, working on a one-to-one, -one, supporting people, giving presentations. And then other people that are really good at the detail might not be so good at the bigger picture. And together, the team works really well. So I think it's important to recognise and look beyond the label, look at what people are good at and align those strengths with the role. And if you have dyslexia, make sure you don't give yourself such a hard time and look at what you're good at and focus on what you're good at because you'll find lots of doors open if you do that. This video was produced for Business Disability Forum in collaboration with BBC and Microlink. With thanks to Anya Otto from ATOS, Joanna Wooten, Age, Disability and Inclusion Expert, Nicola James from Lexic, Paul Beppe from BBC, Paul Smythe from Barclays, Ross Hovey from Lloyds Banking Group, 